there is a word in Hebrew called behema. Okay. I know it's not a shir of shechita, but <laughs> behema. <coughs> and I'm going to mention this again next week when we talk, we talk about something else. Behema is a cow, an ox. And behema, one of the rabbis have said that behema is written bet hey mem hey, can be ba. <coughs> Ba, ma. Ba, in it. Ma is what? What's in it? What's in it, be ma? What's, what's in the, what is it in the animal? And the Maharal says, you want, know, you want to know what's in the animal? On the negative, the animal does not talk. Ba, ma. It doesn't talk. We, humans, we talk. And the reason the laws of Lashon Hara, of slanderous tongue, in gossip, in, in, Jewish, in Jewish law, are so severe. It's because God has given us the ability to talk so we connect to each other. When you gossip or when you slander, you disconnect between people. You build a wall between people with irresponsible talking. Talking was made by God for us to connect. Connect to Torah by studying Torah, connect to God by praying, connect to each other by speaking. That means that when we talk, when we use this gift of talk, we have to do it in the most beautiful way possible. Because God has given us this gift. And there is no higher level of connection between men and a wife, and by the way, between two people in general, rather than expressing appreciation to each other and complimenting to each other. And this is the strongest tool, the best tool to create the strongest bond between a man and a woman is the compliment and the show of appreciation. <coughs> it's easy to prove. Why do we go to work? Why, why do we go to work? Am I going to work because it's fun to work and uh, support a big family? We go to work because we have to make money. That's the only reason we go to work. Some people enjoy it, but basically people go to work to support the families, correct? Do you think you could stay in, your, in a workplace if your boss didn't treat you with some respect, showed you some appreciation, would have said a kind word to you from, from time to time? I had a friend who used to tell me, don't expect a thank you. Be grateful that don't kick you in the backside and every time. <laughs> Just don't, you, you don't have to expect a thank you. You should expect a thank you from time to time. And though you go to work in order to make a living, if you are not appreciated and you're not thanked at your job, you will not be able to sustain this working place and you will leave. And some people would even settle for a job that brings less money but they feel appreciated and they feel welcomed by the boss and being complimented. Why, why should marriage be any different? Why should someone stay in marriage if he's not being appreciated and he's not or she's not being complimented? Same thing. So the Talmud is teaching us that to say a good word is more important than money. And marriage is net feelings. Marriage is all about feelings. Nobody got married, like I said before, because he wanted to support a big family. No woman got married because she couldn't wait to do the laundry. <laughs> and she has no bigger fun than cooking for, 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 for the whole tribe. <coughs> People got, more, got married in order to be emotionally connected. And like I said before, if not within the marriage, if not at home, where do you expect a wife, a woman, to receive compliment and appreciation? Where do you expect the husband to find those, these feelings that he needs? Where? And unfortunately, we witness and we live in a world that people are suffering for, I think in English it's called malnutrition from sharing feelings and compliments and, and appreciation. It's incredible. There's people walking the street and they are desperately hungry because they don't get this basic need 
that they need. And the Rambam says, this is from Ilkhot Deot, the Rambam, because we all know that it's important to love each other and respect each other, the Rambam says, quotes the mitzvah from the Torah, the Torah says, love your friend as you love yourself, we'll mention this again later. So he says, mitzvah al kol adam le'ehov kol echad ve'echad mi'israel kegufo. It's a mitzvah. And I mentioned last week, when the Rabbam says mitzvah, it means it's not optional. Well, on Monday I, I'm going to do this, but on Tuesday I don't feel like doing it. If I want to, if I can, if I have some time, I'll do it. This is, this is not optional. This is an obligation. The same, the same way you have to keep Shabbat, keep kosher, and so on. The same way you have to do that. Mitzvah, it's an order for every person to love each and every single person of Israel, of Am Israel, like his own body. Like yourself. You don't want anybody to offend you? Don't offend anybody else. Sheneemar, as it's written in the Torah, Ve'avta l'reachat rocha. Lefichach. Now, the Rabbam says to me, okay, you have a mitzvah that you have to love everybody. How do we do this? So, the, here's the list. But the first thing in the list, the first thing that he mentions, Lefichach. Therefore, Tzarich l'saper b'shivcho. You have to say good things. First thing is to speak nicely to each other. And that's how you begin the Haftal Recha Kamocha. And of course, Lesaper Bishivcho, to say good things about someone, is the same thing like complimenting. So to compliment your husband, compliment your wife at any given opportunity is a mitzvah, it's an order, and when we have to give account one day when we go to the next world, when we have to give account of how we behaved, there will be no excuses. When the question is asked, did you compliment or, did, or you did not? You did not? Why? There are going to be no, no excuses. So what good does a compliment do? We touched it, let's get into more details. People think that marriage is living in the same house, having the same food, having children together, uh, joint bank account, going to concerts together, going to to, to my lectures together. Um, all kind of, these are just additional stuff which makes marriage. Okay, like we said before, the main aspect of marriage is the emotional dimension. To give compliments means to give your partner what he really or she really needs. Compliments are encouraging your partner to do more. We mentioned this last week, I'll mention it again. There was this woman who complained, I have a burned globe in the house. I've been asking my husband to do it, and he said when he has some, when he's not tired, he'll do it. That was seven months ago. But uh, what annoys me, the woman says, is when his mother needs anything, he's running quickly and he's fixing it in no time. So the answer is, why isn't he doing this at home? Because his wife is not complimenting him not thanking him, but not complimenting him for doing things at home. Why? That's a different story. We mentioned this last week. Because she feels that it's her house, and it's his house, and he has to. Well, if the light in the, in, in the bathroom is burned, he needs the light too, right? Not just me. So, why should I thank him for doing something which is also for him? Why should I compliment him for doing something which is also for him? It's a wrong, it's a wrong concept. The concept is wrong. You have to thank, and you have to compliment. When this man runs to his mother to change uh, the light in the house, it's because when he's done, his mother gives him the, 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 the compliment that he is like the chief engineer of Hadra Quebec. And he can solve all the atomic uh, issues of the world because he's a genius and what a wonderful son and a great guy he is. If the wife would have done the same thing at home with the same attitude, the husband would have done things at home the same way. She's not an appreciation is something that determines whether what you need to do for the other people is easy or difficult. And here comes the picture. If you have a friend that you really, really like, he's a really great friend, and he asks you to carry a refrigerator on your back, you'll do it with a smoke. Eh, he's a no problem. I just love this guy. He's a great guy. He's my best friend. I'll do anything for him, including carrying heavy load on my back. But if you don't like this guy, if he asks you to fetch a um, a pack of matches from the other room. Oh, get out, go to the room, find the matches and bring them. You understand the point? 
if you don't appreciate someone, whatever you ask to, you're asked to do for him, it's going to be really difficult. That's the power of appreciation. Some people find it difficult to compliment. And the question is why? Why is it so difficult to compliment? First of all, in some cases, not always, some cases, we didn't grow up in a house that uh, mommy and daddy complimented each other, so we, we haven't seen an example. And I mentioned last week, we come to the marriage with a whole baggage of what we saw at home. And we try to live our life exactly the same, like our parents did. But not always, and I'm not talking about you, again, I'm talking about your neighbors, some other people in, uh, you know, in Alaska, it's not you. But we come with the baggage, and we come with what we learn from our parents, and it's not always very positive. And if our, if our parents did not compliment each other, then uh, uh, we're not going to compliment each other either. How do That's you bad. A compliment could really start with just a smile. A smile. You give your, father, your, your husband dinner. How do you give the dinner? Take, eat. <laughs> <laughs> your wife is asking you for some money. I'm not talking about a situation when money is short. But again, what did you spend the last money on? If you can, just give her the money. And if you can afford, say, here's the money, I'm so happy that I can afford and give it to you. And when you're giving your husband your dinner, I cooked it for you, I hope you enjoy it because I really want you to, you had a rough day, I really want you to enjoy it. And Don't you find it sarcastic? Come on. <laughs> it's not sarcastic. It's not sarcastic. It's at the beginning. It's mechanical. It's true. At the beginning, when especially so fake. when sometimes it's a fake. We have rules in Torah. In in the in, the, in its lot. I'll digress for a second. When you fulfill mitzvah, mitzvah is to be fulfilled lishma, with the right intention. Okay, that's a rule. Most opinions are hold that if you don't do the mitzvah with the right intention, you didn't really do it. Okay. So the rabbis told us, isn't that a little bit difficult? So the Talmud says, mitoch shelo lishma, ba lishma. You do the mitzvah without the good, the right intention. At a certain point, you will do it with the right intention. At a certain point, and I'm talking about couple which have no orientation of of complimenting each other at a certain point, they have to start mechanically. They have to put a, they are being advised to put a, she needs to put a little note near the uh, in her dressing table, you know, with the mirror. When she puts the makeup, compliment your husband about something, doesn't matter what. And he needs to put one of his laptop on the fridge or whatever, and they have to find, you know, dig under the ground, find something positive to say. That's when we deal with therapy. At a certain point, this mechanical thing, which is, you call cynical or untrue or, 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 or unnatural becomes it becomes uh, a natural thing. Then you can take off the sticker and you are into the habit. Life is about habits, and we're now talking about people who have no habit of complimenting. And by the way, it really it really helps you in your workplace. You compliment your boss, you will have a better relations with your boss. It's the same thing. People like to be complimented. It's not just true for marriage. You have to try and compliment someone for his personality. Because it's our personality which we're worried about usually. You're a nice man. You're a good woman. I heard you uh, speaking. You're very intelligent. Um, I saw you helping in Mada. I think you're a very generous woman. This is the kind of compliments <coughs> that you should give. I appreciate your wisdom. I appreciate your intellect and so on. And this is really, there's a lot of gray area here. There's, I mean, different people need different kind of comments. If you go to a famous rabbi and you tell him, you look lovely. <laughs> He's going, what do you want from me? Tell him, you know, your latest book is, 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 is a gem. It's like a diamond. It's a great Hidushay Torah, great ideas of Torah. That is what he's going to appreciate. You have to look at the person you're complimenting to and find the right thing to say. You just have to think about it. Another advice about complimenting, don't mix them with other things. Don't tell a wife, you know, you just made a very, very smart, uh, intelligent comment. Thank you. By the way, how's Sarah? Don't mix it up. You gave a compliment, leave it like this. It's a compliment. 
You want to ask about Sarah, you want to say anything else about the house, what's happening at work, ask about it, mention it later. A compliment should be a net compliment. Don't involve it with something else. There are also indirect compliments. Go to your child and say, Is it mommy really smart? Go to the child and say, Didn't daddy do something really nice? Go thank you. Go thank her. Teach the child to be positive, to be complimentary, to be grateful. And by this, you also compliment your partner by setting the child off, like I said in the, uh, earlier, complimenting public. Why not? You are making a speech, you're making a toast as the best man in the, in the wedding. Why don't you say something in the line of, uh, and I hope your marriage will be as wonderful as the marriage that I have with my wonderful wife. You know how far a compliment like this can go in marriage? <laughs> There was a woman that uh, he, she and her husband had a lot of difficulties and one day uh, at lunchtime he said, well, that's enough, I've got to do something about it. He went down to the shop and he bought her a dressing gown. Very fashionable, very beautiful, it's a true story. Uh, in the, of, of the kind that she really wanted. And he brought it home and um, he gave it to her. You know, trying to create a little bit better atmosphere in the house. So she opened the package and she looked and she really was glowing, she said it was beautiful and then she said, um, well, uh, where did you get it from? The, uh, the, the union gave new gowns today. And he was like, what happened here? She knows that the union doesn't give this kind of gowns, right? She's not stupid. She understands that, also, that, the, that her husband went down to the shop and he bought it for her. There was something missing. She, what she wanted to hear from him, and later she actually confirmed it, that he would say, no, 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 I bought it, that it's not from the union. I bought it for you because I love you. The transmission was not was incomplete. Okay? If a compliment is meant, it, you, you, you compliment uh, your wife for for the meal, and you just get up and as you walk, thanks for dinner, it was great. No. The better way to compliment is you take the soup, you finish the soup, you haven't eaten your main course yet, soup was great, I can't wait for the next. That's how the compliment is received. If the compliment is not said, not repeated, not said in, in the form and the shape that it's been received, then it's like it was never said. And it's like this husband never gave his wife a gift. Because what was me something was missing.